Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, we're going to have another look at a uh, distro review that was just released. We're going to have a look at Farron OS. Uh, for those waiting for video two of your um, uh, getting started with Linux, that was supposed to be today. Um, but yeah, crappy Windows machines couldn't get anything recorded properly. So uh, I have successfully built a Windows 10 virtual machine on this computer. I will be doing that uh, by the end of the week. Maybe that'll also be up sometime tonight. Not quite sure yet. Uh, but keep an eye out for that um, coming down the pipeline. But in the meantime, uh, Farron just sent me a message today saying he has released his new version of Farron OS. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick gander over at that. So here is, of course, his... Uh, release notes. Uh, so he does a release every few months. This one, the major update is um, uh, the major update is it's based on Ubuntu 18 and Linux Mint 19. Um, he does a major update alert. Soon to be updaters do not take the major update yet until further notice. This is probably because still working on getting some bugs taken care of and things like that. He does actually provide an update script if you want it. Um, you can actually get an update script, but he is advising not to do that quite yet. All right. Um, the Farron OS major update, ASAP to 2008, or higher. This protects major updating while I deem the process unsafe due to an upstream issue. So just a warning. So we are just going to be having a quick look at this. I've installed it. I've poked around a little bit. And then we're just going to have a look at what is in this uh, distro. He is talking about some of the, uh, some of the issues. He's talking about... Um, uh, some other things. Let's see. Here's some release notes of this one here. Um, there's some NVIDIA issues. Be aware of that. Uh, issues from Linux Mint 19 that have been fixed. He fat patched the latest available Ubuntu system adjustments uh, to remove the Mint boot screen theme as it kept replacing Farron's boot screen, uh, as well as configuring Firefox myself so it's not Linux minted Firefox. So in other words, if you install Linux Mint on it, it is not Linux Mint's version of Firefox, which some people have had a issue with. So uh, what is Farron? Uh, this is a OS. Now, the coolest thing about Farron is that it's one of the OSs from a very young developer. So uh, this developer, to my knowledge, is, I don't know, 17 maybe? Are you 18 yet? I don't know. You'll see the video. You'll comment on it uh, if you care. Um, but that's the cool part about it is how well he has done to develop a, a good, well-received distro at that age is quite good. This is based on, uh, based on Linux Mint. And so, you know, of course, it's a, you know, Linux Mint is based on, on Ubuntu. Ubuntu is based on Debian. So this is like a great, great grandchild of Debian. Uh, some people will tout Farron as being a little too heavy. Some people will say maybe it's just what I was looking for. So that's one of the things that you want to consider. And uh, we're going to go ahead and have a look at uh, what this guy looks like here. Here is again the update script. You can find that in the pages. So there's a script to update. But warning, do not uh, go ahead and push that update quite yet. Hey, so here we are booted into a virtual machine. We are running in software rendering mode as per our notification. And they also give you the notice that you are running this in a virtual machine. I'm not quite sure why he gives us this notice. Uh, this is certainly something that's very important if you are in, for example, Tails or something, but eh, whatever, okay. Um, so here is our desktop. We have Conky with a clock. We have our update manager down here um, where you can go through and uh, push your updates. This, is, uh, this version here is based on Linux Mint 19, so it's not giving us, um, it's not giving us the option which type of system do we use. See, there's a variety of updates we can run. He does have a weather app installed by default, and he is using the advanced menu, not the basic uh, menu that comes pre-installed on Cinnamon. This is the advanced menu. It supports uh, searching, and uh, there is a um, uh, there's a, a variety of different uh, types of options. Here's your uh, basic home options, your software, basically your system settings, a favorites panel, and then the all applications will bring you in. Uh, as for some people saying this is fairly heavy, I, I would tend to agree. 
uh, in that it does have uh, it does have a lot of the the types of things that that you would need for uh, all your basic system tools, but it has a lot of other stuff in it as well. Uh, we have Docky, um, so you can get a dock set up on it um, if you want. I'm not sure why it's there and not configured out of the box. Um, now can I get rid of the thing? Quit. There you go. Not sure why it's installed but not set up. Um, that seems to be something that if you want it, then you would install it probably. Uh, but there's a lot of decisions like that. Um, you know, Krita is pre-installed. Um, not sure why it's Krita and not GIMP or why um, why you need such a heavy heavy image editor. Um, and of course, GIMP is the more popular one. As far as the mail, they're using the they're using the elementary, the Pantheon mail, which is um, possibly even worse than that other crappy one that's been used lately. Um, so that's kind of, like I said, a few a few interesting decisions to be made. Some of the great things about it, though, is we have uh, the web browser manager is very nice. So this actually allows you to install your favorite um, your favorite browsers. Vivaldi is installed by default. We have the option to install Chromium. I think this is the regular GNOME web, uh, Google Chrome, and Firefox. So you can install these. Uh, or uninstall these just based upon which ones of these uh, are there. Of course, I did I. Okay, there you go. Don't note to self. Don't push this be, below the window. So we'll go ahead and let those do their thing. As far as Office, uh, we do have the LibreOffice suite. This is LibreOffice six. They do have a transfer tool. So the transfer tool allows you to transfer files. I don't know exactly how this works, uh, but basically we have a, a option here that you can, um, I don't know how this thing works. Like I'm trying to select something, but. It says none selected. Um, there might be, there might be some a manual on this, how to use this somewhere. Uh, it's not obvious to me how to use this. In theory, the, the concept is allows you to back up and, you know, his idea here is to build a system that is kind of like Windows friendly. How can you back up and restore to and from Windows? Um, backup data from Farron. I'm trying to select something. Can't seem to select anything. Well, that's a neat concept, but um, okay. All right. Uh, Conky will toggle on or off the clock. I, again, I'm not sure why, um, because Cinnamon, th this is based on Linux Mint Cinnamon, and if you go into your... Um, you have applets, uh, I forget which is it applets or widgets, I forget which one's which. Um, but you actually have the option to put a clock on your desktop without having to use Conky. Remember, I have to remember which one's which. I don't actually use these personally. Yeah, I don't know, maybe the, maybe the clock is, is gone now, but. I know at some point in time there was the ability to install a clock. Let me go back into the system settings again, make sure I'm the, on the right one here. So, yeah, okay, there's panel applications. Oh, that's right, it is desklets. All right, so... we can go ahead and add what I think is a better clock and one that is a lot easier to configure over here without having to uh, use Conky. So again, I'm not quite sure what was the logic in, uh, in having Conky on here when Cinnamon could do the same thing uh, out of the box. Um, but it is certainly an option.
Icon browser is good. We have VLC for our media. I think that's the only one. So that's actually a good choice, having having just one media player instead of all of them. Some people might want to add or install something different. Uh, but the fact that there's not five different audio players on here is a good thing. Uh, on to some of the things that, that some people have uh, had an issue with over the years. If we boot up our uh, software sources, you'll see frequently that doesn't actually show up. I found that you have to access software sources from the menu to, to load it. Uh, that doesn't seem to show up if you go anywhere else. This is where some people are have complained about this before. There are indeed a lot of PPAs installed. Um, so this is indeed a lot of PPAs. So we have elementary OS PPAs. The only application I know of is the email application. Use Thunderbird or Geary, I think, is the other one, which is very similar to it. But eh, both of them kind of suck. They're extremely limited. I don't know what fingerprint is. Um, we have LibreOffice. I'm not sure if this is because it's in Ubuntu or not. I'm not completely sure about that. We have OBS in here. The good news is you can install OBS right out of the box. The, the bad news is unless you, you know, if you need OBS, you probably know how to do that. Um, so there are indeed a lot of, uh, a lot of, PPAs on here. So it lends itself to be a, a fairly sizable, uh, fairly sizable system. It is actually down in size. It used to be almost two or three gigabytes to download. It is down to, I think, 1.8 gig for the actual file. Uh, they do have a good welcome screen. Uh, this is one of the advantages is if you are new to the system, you can actually come into the welcome screen. This is very nice and it tells you a little bit about the system. Um, there is, I think he used to have, he used to have Wine and Play on Linux installed by default. Um, and I never recommend that. You only install those if you know you need them. And so that's uh, certainly something to keep in mind. So it's nice that he now has a good welcome screen where you can install it if you need it. Uh, same with Steam. There's a lot of these different different applications that he says. So here's the soft uh, SoftMaker Office, which is the trial and paid. Here's WPS if you want something other than LibreOffice, and Games Pack. So this is actually very nice that he has a good place to go to see some of these different applications without having them pre-installed, very much like that web browser tool. Maybe expanding that web browser tool to one panel with your different recommendations. Customization, we talk about the keyboard settings, the themes, and then uh, going back, you can do your updates, you can do your drivers, um, and let's see what else there is. Installing software, you have Flatpak, Snaps, and the Software Center, again, based on Linux Mint 19. This is the Linux Mint 19 software installer. Uh, snaps and Flatpaks, these will just load up to their individual pages, I think. I'm pretty sure the, snap, or the Snaps do. So this one, again, it's going to the Flatpaks. Uh, again, I'm not completely sure why, because... For me, I like to keep things minimal. If you go into the Linux Mint Software Manager, they actually have all the flat packs right in here. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to have the flat pack option there when it's already right inside your software manager. Uh, some people have commented uh, difficulty on seeing some of the GTK theming um, versus QT. Uh, it does look like there's been some improvements. I think that's one of the things. But if you do notice, though, that uh, there is, it, it does indeed... Um, it is quite a bit significantly different. So if you look at Linux Mint, um, these will be themed to match each other. Here they're not. And so that's, I don't know, some people have a hang up about that. I generally don't, uh, but it's just something worthy of, of mentioning. As far as everything else is concerned, um, you know, that's that's kind of fair in a nutshell. It's, it's basically a, a highly customized Linux Mint cinnamon. A um, lot of extra PPAs. Uh, I'm not sure about why some of the software choices were made the way they were made, but uh, that's okay. Uh, it's it's still not a bad computer. It's something you might if you if I don't know. I'm not sure who it's for to be honest. Um, it's definitely more of a project. I like some of the things he's doing with it. 
Uh, I need more information on this Farron OS transfer tool. Uh, if this is, was I just not using it right? Is there instructions for it somewhere? That would be neat to know. Uh, the, uh, I like the concept of that because it basically allows you to, to have some other means of backup. Everything else inside here is going to be essentially Linux Mint Cinnamon. So I think in the past, let's go ahead and have a quick look at our themes while we're here, because that's one of the things that this has always been, uh, always had a lot of extra themes that were probably superfluous. Um, this does though look as though he had made some changes to it. So we have our basic themes here. Uh, we can install a themer file. We have a variety of different options here. So I think this is what can the themes change. So this is neat if you have already set something up the way you really like it. So if I really like the way that my panel is, I can turn this off. And then in theory, what this means is if I change my themes to something else, then it will not, okay, I guess it does change the panel. So maybe that didn't do what I thought it would. Well, you do have a variety of different panels. Uh, you know what, maybe, let's see, there's your Mac style. Farron for touch screens. Not seeing what all those differences are, but he does have significantly fewer themes than he used to, so that's actually good. Uh, and that's probably why the system is quite a bit smaller than it used to be. Startup applications, we have our basic cinnamon, we have conky. Docky is starting up, but it's not actively being used. I'm not sure. Flatpak updates, Mint updates, Print, SSH, um, NVIDIA. VM dialog for the virtual machine detection. Not like I'm not sure why I would necessarily need that, but okay, it's it's an option. I think that's about it. So there's Farron OS. Uh, let me know what you think of it down here in the bottom, uh, in the uh, comments down there. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, but in the meantime, you can uh, help support this channel at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. And you check out the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.